So if you have a newer engine like this EcoBoost engine right here that uses a DAMB, a direct acting mechanical bucket style lifter for the valves, chances are you may not ever have to adjust the valve lash. That's the beautiful thing about this type of valve train. But because there's no need to adjust the lash during the life cycle of the engine, that means you have to get the right size the first time. And if you have to change out your cam buckets, trying to figure out what sizes you need because, oh, trust me, there's a lot, can be a bit challenging, but no fear, there's an easy method to the madness, which I'm going to show you right now. So the first thing I suggest you do is go ahead and look at all of your old cam buckets and take a look at the number inside the bucket. You'll see the number right inside there and go look through all of them and choose the smallest number out of all of those buckets. And what I suggest is to order at least four of that size for your engine. If it's only two valves per cylinder, then I only suggest doing two. But if it's a four valve per cylinder dual overhead cam engine, four will do the trick. Now, with that said, the more you have, the quicker it will be, but you're gonna be spending twice the money, so I don't recommend that. And then once you get those, then we can go ahead and start taking measurements. So this is what we'll need to do. When you do get your cam buckets, go ahead and take the four and do one cylinder at a time. That's why I said four, that way you can get all four valves for that cylinder at the same time, and then you can work your way. So the first thing you need to do is obviously, in this engine, the camshafts are installed, but you will have to remove the cams, take the cam caps off, remove the cams, install the new buckets, right? And then reinstall the cams, torque down the caps to the factory torque setting, and this is where we will take our measurements. So when installing your cams, you wanna make sure that the back side of the lobe, not the tip, not the point, the back side of the lobe is the side facing the cam bucket. And once you have the orientation of your cams that way, with the tips of the lobes pointing up or pointing inwards, then you're ready to take your measurements. So obviously we're gonna be using feeler gauges. Um, you can use these straight ones like this, but on some setups, it's hard to get it in there, but on this EcoBoost, you can get away with using these. I recommend getting a set of these angled ones like this. Trust me, it makes a life a whole lot easier. So now we're gonna go in here and start measuring. So you kind of just wanna go through and see uh, where a good place to start, usually lower. You know, you start at a lower one. See, let's check this one right here. This one is eight thousandths. I know for a fact this is too small but you can put it in there and see that it, it basically just slides underneath with no resistance. You kind of just want a little bit of resistance, but not too much resistance. And you don't want to have to force the feeler gauge to get in there. Um, that means it's just too big. So let's say we'll go up to 14 thousandths. So if 14 was too small, we're gonna go ahead up to 16. We're gonna see if 16 is the right one. So we'll go ahead, stick it down in there and yeah, 16, it's not super tight. There is some resistance sliding back and forth. That means that is the right clearance. So once you go through all of those valves, you wanna go ahead and write down the measurement you took in thousands of an inch. And then we can go on to the next step. So obviously you wanna be able to keep track of your measurements. Get yourself a piece of paper. This is what I did. I know this is a bunch of chicken scratch and but this is just a reference for you on how I kept all my measurements and kept everything in place. So I literally just took one of these and went and traced out as many as I needed. In my case, I needed 16 of these. And then the measurements I took, I wrote that number on the top half of the circle. So what you're gonna need to do is use this formula right here. B plus V minus D equals N. B equals the size of the bucket you're using to measure. So that smallest bucket you find out of the old ones, that's the one you're using to measure, that's B. V equals the measured lash with the feeler gauge and that cam bucket. D is the desired lash. So the desired lash means uh, the correct size for your engine. It can be different for both intake and exhaust. You'll have to look up what it is for your engine, the correct uh, lash for your engine. But when you find that out, that is what D. So I'm gonna walk you through the formula and show you how to do it. Here is our formula once again, B plus V minus D equals N. B, which equals the size of the cam bucket I used to measure in my case, was 0 0.009. 
five. Everything is calculated using thousandths of an inch and then converted back to millimeters for the final number. The lash that I measured between that bucket and the cam was 16 thousandths or 0.016, which we can go ahead and take our measured size and put it in the top half of our circle here so that we remember that valve measured at that lash. And now we have D, which is the size we want to be at, the nominal clearance. And on this engine, it is 0.25 millimeters and convert it over to a thousandths of an inch, we get 10 thousandths. So now that we have all of our numbers, we go ahead and of course we take B plus V and that gives us 0 0.0255. We go ahead and take 0 0.255, we subtract D, 10 thousandths of an inch, and then we get 0 0.0155. Now the last thing we have to do is convert this to uh, millimeters, which is easy, we'll use Google. And the thing is, with the decimals, since it is 155, anything five and up will round up, anything below five will leave it alone. So since it's 155, we'll round up to 16. So coming over here to Google, we have millimeter and inch. This will calculate everything we need to know. So we'll go to our inch here, and we'll go ahead and punch 0 0.016. And that gives us zero, 0.4064 or 406. Therefore, our final number is a 406. We need a 406 size bucket for that valve. And that's pretty much it. You pretty much will do that for every one of your valves, depending on how many you need to do until you get all of your sizes. And then you go ahead and order the right ones you need. Keep the piece of paper for a reference because now this piece of paper is gonna tell you exactly where all your new sizes need to go and which valves. I marked as if this was the cylinder head, back, front, intake, exhaust. That way you do not get mixed up. So that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. Now you can go ahead, get your measurements, order the right parts to get your car back on the road. So I hope this helps. Keep a look out for the next Cars Creative video.